How's it going? This is Josh Bordelotti here. Uh, I kind of want to make a quick video kind of elaborating on the journey I kind of went through specifically for going through the ROTP program at a civilian university and not at RMC. I received a couple comments on a past video just kind of asking what the kind of typical application kind of journey looks like and I know I kind of went through a pretty unique one given that I applied in July of 2016 and I only got sworn in in June of 2018. So yeah, I was interning in Parliament uh, in 2016, summer of 2016, when I decided to actually make an application. Uh, on that application, you have your three jobs in kind of a ranked preference list, which at the end of the day though, is not really a ranked preference list. It's just three, three, three options, that's all it really is. So my first option was intelligence officer, then after that infantry officer, and then after that, public affairs officer. I thought they were kind of interesting enough jobs and had enough variety for me to kind of see what would be uh, kind of my strong suit after doing the aptitude test. So I kind of, I thought that was a kind of a good um, ranking preference. And so I went ahead with that. Ended up doing the aptitude test once I got back to Calgary. It is very, very long and pretty much it's kind of just a high school-esque exam where it asks you kind of, you know, word association problems, you know, solve the net graphs. So after that, I think I did like the 10 people who were in my round, round a group of applying. There was three of us that were called in at once, which kind of seemed a lot to me though. The sergeant there told us that we were the only three that passed, like for anything, any job that we picked. Um, so for me, however, I passed for two of my choices, which was intelligence officer and infantry officer. After that, however, there, I, um, I ran into a bit of a hiccup because in order to proceed to my actual medical test, which was supposed to be the next thing for me to do, I needed proof of my name change because I was legally adopted at the age of six and my birth, my birth certificate, everything was changed to my new last name. And because I didn't actually have any specific paperwork that listed my last name, they said, you need to get us that. We have to put everything on hold. Because it took me a very, very long time to get that because I actually had to contact the courthouse where my adoption was done directly in Ottawa. I didn't get that information until next February and March. And by that time, when I sent them to the event, they said that the ROTP program was, was over for that year. They've already picked their round people. So it was gonna have to be delayed. And then they were gonna reopen it the following September. Meanwhile, at this time, I'm actually at the University of Calgary. In September, they basically reopened it. Uh, I had to get them some up updated transcripts and whatnot. Uh, and then I actually got an email saying that we're gonna interview you for, they're, they're gonna pick one of the jobs I passed for and they picked infantry. And they said, we're gonna interview you and do your medical on the same day for infantry officer. So, um, did the interview first. Really important that, uh, especially for combat arms, people who are looking to uh, getting into that, that if you have any background in sports, that you really, really highlight it and kind of show them that you, you, you have a history uh, working uh, with other people in kind of a team environment that you they've been very very physically active and so that was pretty much the primary questions that they were asking me was about you know kind of sports i've done in the past which i've done a lot I tell them about my kind of my family history and they kind of want to know questions about that it's kind of funny they actually said this verbatim if there is a third world war you will be expected to fight do you understand this yes ma'am that's what you have to kind of say and then i did the medical interview they asked you to like do five squats or like 10 push-ups just to see if you're even able to do that. There's no actual fitness exam, fitness test until you're already in basic. And after that, that's, this was in December of 2017 that I got, that I did this interview and I waited six months. I waited until June, like I think first 2018 is when I actually got the email with an employment offer and the date in which in the email they said, hey, this is when you're gonna swear in and this is when you're gonna leave to go on uh, your BMOQ Mod 1. So in that six months, obviously, I had poured through every single army.ca forum because there's a lot of really good information that they post on there regarding how many actual recruits and officer cadets are gonna be taking in for a given year for the ROTP program uh, and for what occupation as well. I must have dropped into that recruitment center in Calgary about six times during that six months. I think, yeah, once every month, give or take, just to say, hey, what's my status, what's going on? So it was actually during one of my my like final trips that I made to the recruitment center that I was trying to ask him again, you know, hey, what's the status? And it was basically like, pretty sure you're getting it. Like it's, it's looking pretty good. I wouldn't worry about that. But of course, you still worry about that because you, you know, when, when you're starting off in this process, you have like no information. 
especially if you don't really know anyone who's been through that process. So yeah, after that, um, I did my spring in ceremony. Uh, and then, yeah, then I was up to, out to uh, St. John for my Mod 1. What I'd also like to do is kind of tell you a little bit about how the ROTP Civilian University Program is going to impact your university life, especially because in a sense, you're, you're, you're back in, in the civilian world, like you're out of a military environment. You're st still in the military, uh, you're still getting paid by the military, being a student is your job, you're expected to have the best marks, but in terms of your day-to-day -day kind of life, you know, it's, it's, it's very normal. It's very, and because I, especially because I had spent um, the first half of my degree there on my own kind of student loans, uh, on my own budget, um, and in comparison to now, the, the, the main real difference is in the um, administration side of getting your, your, your financing. Basically buy all your books up front and then keep receipts for everything. And then you're actually gonna be filling out appropriate paperwork to act to be sending off to your actual uh, unit so that they can actually begin the process of, of reimbursing you. In regards to one of kind of final note um, about applying to RMC, I did make it uh, apparent during my application that because you, you have to rank in preference, do you want to go to civilian university or do you want to go to RMC? And even though I was at the University of Calgary, I told them that right. My preference is if, if you guys offer it to me to go to RMC. However, because I had already technically begun um, like my university at the University of Calgary, they what the recruitment office told me was that they want fresher, kind of right out of high school kids going into RMC or to CMR St. Jean. So what I can say is that if you have, um, there's no harm in just applying. And I kind of regret not applying for RMC now, um, going right out of high school. But of course, that's not here or there. Um, but I would definitely recommend that if you're, if you're on the fence, just apply. Um, the worst thing that can happen is they say no. The second worst thing is they say yes, but you don't want to go anyway. And then, you know, you're not, you're not on the hook, but they still, they still give you an offer. And then the best possible situation is that's what you want to do. That's where you want to go and you get in. Um, so don't hesitate for applying for the military. Do it now. Do it as soon as possible because in my, in my, in my situation, it did take longer than I think it should have taken. I think everything should have been wrapped up within a year, especially for my entry program. But depending on what kind of job and how much education you have already, if you already have a university degree, if you're just going in um, as non-commissioned, there's gonna be certain types of, uh, of waiting waiting times for when you're put on course. Because basically when you're put on course, it's like being registered for school, that's all it is. They basically have a class roster, or that's how people are going in, then there'll be a certain amount of people coming out. Um, and they need, they need time to actually plan and prepare this. Um, these and it's not like it's every single week there's something new offered for everything and then you're going to be able to wrap everything up in no time it will it will take a little bit of time so any questions that uh that you have for me post in the comments i'll answer uh, all of them um to the best of my ability or if you have any other personal experience that you think you might add post that in the comments too because other people who, who watch this video are probably going to be quickly glancing it quickly reading it um and yeah the purpose of this is just to kind of give anyone who needs information about ROTB, CVU, uh, more information about it to, uh, to, because it's, um, I don't, I, I, during all the research I did um, before committing to join, join the, the forces, there wasn't a lot of information on it though. Of course, there, there is the, the Canadian Forces does publish their own videos on the matter, and I'm assuming by the time you've watched this video, you've already poured through everything um, to, that you need to know regarding your actual uh, preferred jobs. Uh, and your and, and your enrollment plan or your commissioning plan um, So yeah, thank you for watching post your comments down below like the video subscribe do all that kind of fun obligatory youtuber stuff and um, take it easy